Hello everyone. So this is just a quick video log more for myself versus like actually publishing this. But this has been a bridge layer which I've been working on for maybe like two years on and off. And it's gone through a lot of iterations, a lot of modifications. And um, let's see, it's the beginning of 2025, brand new year. And I'm happy to see that this bridge layer is like there it is done it is so close to being done um at least on the aspects of being functional and it's reliable and uh, at its current state the bridge segments are about two and a half uh, feet each so when linked up together it is a five foot beam type bridge and it can cross, the vehicle can deploy it over a four foot gap. Um, I'm pretty sure with a couple more modifications I can reach out further, but I'm just going to keep it safe and say that it can cross a, easily a four foot gap. And um, just dumping thoughts and trying to keep track of all my thoughts of where this is going. Um currently at this moment i still need to attach the side skirts for the other side of the vehicle um, on the left side and then also add some styling like uh, star wars greebling type things uh, just to give it more of a aesthetic look a style but for the most part, I was, I'm focusing more on just the functionality and the aesthetics can be developed over time. Um, then I'm also going to need to wait on a couple more parts to come in the mail to replace some of the uh, rails and the brackets and the support structures onto the bridge segments. And that should be coming in shortly. And then... Uh, the rear just needs a little bit of aesthetic, a couple more aesthetic touches to it. One thing I kind of like right here are these little mud flaps made out of Technic beams. And I just think that's kind of cool. It's been a while since I've actually played around with um, small details like that. And so once I get to that stage of uh, the building, it's just more exciting, more fun versus doing all this mechanical figuring out stuff. And, uh, and so that's like a good marker to tell me that uh, this design is really near completion, like so close to completion, because I finally reached like the fun parts of the building. Um, more of like the aesthetics and stuff. Mm -hmm. Could figure out how I want to do the front support. Um, right now, the front support works pretty well for like flat tabletop surfaces, but you can imagine that uh, if I were to take this outside and try and roll it across some rougher terrain, uh, the front support would go through a lot of wear and tear. So in my mind, I got to start thinking about if I want to make that into more of like a sacrificial type of piece or do I want to design it to where it's, um, it can withstand more wear or more rough use. And then it, this is kind of like a cool angle. You can kind of see that uh, these are, when this is fully assembled, it's a beam type of bridge. And uh, it's kind of like a channel, a U-channel type of bridge. And uh, that's to keep it lightweight. I'm pretty sure we can make the bridge stronger by covering the bottom panels of this. But uh, I would need to have a heavier platform to counterweight the, the added weight to the bridge. And then on a different side note, oh, that reminds me. A couple things which I would like to do eventually is actually slow down this uh, center rail just a little bit, add more torque, and then a little bit do the same with the rear elevator motor. And then, let's see what else. What's one more thing? Well, I can't think of the thought in my head right now, but 
pretty soon I'll have to make a digital instruction file more for like uh, future use, not really to publish, not really for sale because the electronics which I'm using for this bridge layer are kind of out of date at this point and um, going to need to start researching into designing my own controller setup. That way I can have more flexibility when demonstrating this. Oh, that reminds me now. Um, currently I got to start thinking about how I'm going to be displaying this vehicle when I go out to conventions and um, was at public events and uh, I've pretty much done all the measurements and like done a bunch of test drives. I got them pretty good at driving it. Uh, this vehicle is it requires a lot of it's remote control, but it requires a lot of manual input. And I'm currently using a PlayStation controller for the controls. Um, this joystick would be for steering. This would be forward and reverse. This would be controlling the rear section of the bridge. This would be up, this would be down. This should be forward, reverse. And then this one here would be for the cantilever control arm. This would make it pitch up and down. And then this would be forward and reverse as well. And then this would be for the center rail. The center rail, this would be to deploy. This would be to retract. And then this would be for the front jack. That would be that one. This would be the deploy. This would be to retract. And then the, let's see, what number is that? R2 button. That would be for that uh, center lock with the red Technic piece there. And uh, the reason why I got put that in the video so then I remember in case I'd need to reprogram it from scratch again. But um, so currently this is all remotely controlled, but it requires a lot of manual inputs from the control system. And then one thing that I'm having a problem with is that I need to be uh, using Wi-Fi to control my vehicle. And so I need to have a local platform where it's the platform can be just controlled directly by the PlayStation controller. Um, so I'm going to have to investigate using Arduinos and then um, soldering the interfaces with Lego motors. Um, and then that, and then along those lines, uh, I need to come up with a way to display this in a dynamic fashion into uh, public events. And uh, my thinking would be that I would need a three foot by three foot table, uh, two of those, and there would be a four foot gap between the two. And then I don't know what how high I'd like it to be, but it may be like a standard height, maybe like something like this or even higher. And then uh, it would be kind of cool if that display table setup could also double function as like a shipping crate for transporting uh, different Lego displays of mine. And then let's see that with that type of display, I should be able to easily operate this by deploying, running over the bridge, picking up on the other side, and then driving around, picking it up, and that kind of thing. Okay. And then, let's see. I think I should also talk about... So this vehicle has been a project for two years, and this is supposed to be a further development of my jab Lego military bridge layer that was kind of based on it was a scissor type bridge put onto one of my lego abrams tank chassis and that could also cross a four foot gap and this would be like a further development kind of testing uh the how far i could take it when it comes to bridge laying vehicles this would be a more advanced version of the real vehicle um, based on the Bieber bridge laying system, which is a modular robotic um, bridge laying system that's put on a Leopard 1 chassis. And then that was further developed, and that's a German vehicle, by the way, and that was further further developed into the Leak 1 uh, series of bridge layer, which is on a Leopard 2 chassis. And so when describing and coming up with a name for this vehicle, you can kind of say since it's on a modified Lego Abrams tank chassis that this would be considered a Wolverine, a M104 
bridge lane vehicle, which is a United States Army vehicle. But uh, I can't necessarily call it a Wolverine because there are some key aspects which just don't make it into a Wolverine in my, um, in my view. In a way, the system that I have here is a lot different from the actual vehicle just because of the fact that, well, there are also still a lot of similarities. But um, the way the bridges, bridge segments in, uh, interface with each other, the cantilever system, and then I also want to say that I added a third rail to the system, and that's just because of the limitations of LEGO. And um, so for me, I need to add a third rail to counterweight the weight of the bridge, as opposed with the real life vehicle. Um, it doesn't require it because an armored vehicle is actually quite heavy, up to like 40 tons. So this is more like a tracked vehicle, track vehicle launched bridge. And uh, also another defining feature which separates this from being like more like a M104 vehicle, it would be the fact that this one here has eight road, wheel, eight road wheels versus uh, the seven on, um, on one side on an Abrams tank. So the chassis here really doesn't accurately depict an Abrams tank or a Leopard vehicle or uh, any real like armored vehicle launch bridge layers. And so I'm going to give this a designation completely unique to the vehicle and then just give credits to the actual vehicles that it was based on. And so I'm going to call this one the lemur. So it kind of rhymes with like Lieber and uh, Lee Guan. And then um, was it, uh, how did I come up with that? Uh, I came up with Lima, right? Because uh, designation, the letter L military phonetic alphabet, um, because my uncle's name is Lorenzo. And I have my reasons why I want to put L in there, because I want to give uh, some shout outs to my uncle. But it eventually went off with lemur, because lemurs are kind of cute. And so I have to come up with like the, like the number designation. I want to say it's like a Model 2 version. And then I want to do A as an alpha 1. And that all reasons for those numbers too, or letters or designations, just because this has just been a really long, long, long process in building this vehicle. Um, this is a V2 or a Mark II or a version two type of thing, because uh, the previous version, instead of having a center rail to counterweight the mass of the bridge, I had a like a swing arm butterfly knife type of thing going on and that eventually got phased out but anyway that's the end of this just long long blurb because i just felt like i need to like run through all my thoughts collect the thoughts and then um this is like a good reference video for me in how i'm going to be publishing this vehicle uh for the future but anyway that's the end of this video